I want to say this problem of the society and how most people grow up. Nataka kuzungumza kuhusu jinsi vile watu tunavyoishi katika jamii na vile tunavyoendelea kuguzwa katika jamii. For most people when we grow up we were told things like this. Wakati tulipokuwa tukiendelea kuwa tulikuwa tunaambiwa mambo kama haya. You are not good enough I don't like you. Wewe si mtu mzuri na sikupendi. You have done this thing but it's not good enough. Japo kwa umefanya umefanya mambo haya lakini haujafanya vizuri zaidi. And some are many areas you need a lot of help. Alafu sasa wanakuambia sehemu nyingi za maisha yako unahitaji msaada. Now that's basically living under the law. Hiyo ni kuishi chini ya sheria. The law means you have to obey you have to do good enough. Sheria ni kwamba lazima utii na uwe mtu wa kufanya vile ulivyoambiwa. And I want to use an illustration of two persons falling in love and then after they get married what will happen? Nataka kuzungumza juu ya watu wawili waliochumbiana wakapendana wakaoana tuone sasa ni nini matokeo ya mambo kama hayo. Now when people fall in love very often they will think about the other person. Wakati mtu anapopenda mwingine mapenzi yakiwa machanga kila mmoja anakaa akimuwaza mwingine. They will try to find ways to make the other person happy. Yaani kila mmoja atafanya juu chini akamfurahishe mwingine. And they want to see the person more often. Na wataka yani kila wakati wanaomba wanataka wao wanaonana. If the person knows that the other person wants something then this person will be very willing to do it. Basi kama hao watu tayari wamekusha kupendana wao kwenye mapenzi mmoja wao akihitaji chochote mmoja wake atahakisha kwamba ameteana. Have you noticed this about people who are in love? Je, mshawahi shuhudia mambo kama haya watu wakiwa katika mapenzi? Amen. Have you noticed that? Okay. Let's look at what happened after they get married. Haya sasa hawa watu walikuwa wanapendana sana kabla hawajawaona. Hebu tuone sasa kama wamewaona. Ni lipi neno tokelezea? Very often they will start to say, "Well, you didn't help me with this house chores." Aha, sasa wamekwisha kuoana wanaishi wamezoeana wanaanza sasa kila mtu kumwambia mwingine mambo mazito mazito. You didn't listen to me. Nilipokuangalia kitu kile bora And then they begin to have negative feelings. Sasa unapata eh, kila mmoja anaanza kuwa na hisia kinyume na mwingine. This why many people after they get married they lose the feeling when they fell in love. Ndio unaona kwamba watu wengi walikuwa wanapendana sana kabla hawajaoana lakini wakisha waana ule upendo unadidimia. Na now for me and my wife we really want to love each other and keep that love we have always had. Yeye na mkewe wamejaribu sana kuweka ule upendo aliokuwa nao wa kwanza hadi wa sasa. Because I treasure her, I treasure my marriage, I treasure my relationship with God. Kwa sababu mimi ninadhamini sana ndoa yangu na pia nadhamini sana upendo wangu kati ya mke wangu. But many people don't think like that. Lakini watu wengi hawafikirii mambo kama hayo. They just say My spouse hasn't done what I like him or her to do. Sasa itakuwa ni watu kuzungumziana maneno mazito. Ho jamani mbona hajafanya hivi? Mbona hajafanya lile? And he yells at me. Ananipigia kelele. And then they get more and more and happy with each other. Na sasa unapata katika ndoa hakuna watu hawaishi katika furaha. Then they always say you didn't do this, you have to do this. Sasa wanaanza kusukumiana maneno mazito. Mbona hujafanya hili? Mbona hili likafanyika hivi? But when they were in love it's totally different. Lakini walipokuwa katika vipindi vya kutumbiana hawajaoana, walikuwa wanafanya kazi pamoja upendo ulikuwa mwingi. They were very willing to do anything for their person. Yaani kila mmoja alikuwa tayari kumtendea mwingine jambo la kuhakikisha kwamba amemfurahisha. Have you how many couples that you notice that they still keep the relationship when they were following in love with each other how many couples have you seen Aha. around you basi wewe anakuuliza swali kuna watu je kuna watu ambao ulikuwa unawajua kabla walikuwa hawajaoana walikuwa wanapendana vizuri sana lakini tayari sasa wameoana kule upendo haupo ushawahi umeshawahi shuhudia watu kama hao do you see many couples like this or very few couples that keep the love they had when they were dating kati ya wale ambao wametunza upendo wao tangia wajuani hadi wa leo na wale ambao upendo wao umenidimia ni wangapi wengi 
So answer me. Many couples like this or not too many? Ni wangapi wengi ambao bado wanaishi katika ule upendo? Ni wengi ama ni wachache? Few few the love has yeah, down. So most of them the love has gone down. And few keep the same love, right? Few keep the same love. Okay. Now, basically after the marriage they fall under the law. Aha, baada ya kuoana sasa wanaanza kuishi katika sheria. They expect each other to do some to different things but they didn't do it so they always accuse. Yaani sasa walikuwa wanatarajia kwamba kama ni mke anatarajia mmewe kwamba atamfanyia vitu fulani fulani vikubwa na kwa hiyo sasa mmewe akishindwa kumfanyia hivyo inakuwa ni matusi. And they get more and more unhappy, unhappy with the spouse. Na sasa kunakuwa kwamba katika hiyo ndoa hakuna upendo, hakuna furaha. Because they are living under the demand of the Lord, you have to do it and you didn't do it so I accuse you. Kwa sababu wanaishi chini ya sheria, wanaishi chini ya mahitaji ya sheria. But then when they were chasing up each other, when they were falling in love, so it was totally different. They were very willing to do things for their person. Lakini walipokuwa hawajaoana, walikuwa wanaishi vizuri, wanatembeleana, wanashikana, wakitembea, lakini wanapooana mambo hayo yote yanapotea. I want to say that this is similar to our relationship with God. Nataka kusema kwamba hata vivyo hivyo ndivyo ilivyo kati ya upendo wetu na Mungu. When many people heard about Jesus, they heard about Jesus' love. Wakati watu wengi waliposikia kuhusu Kristo Yesu, walisikia kuhusu upendo wa Kristo Yesu. And they were touched or healed by the Holy Spirit. Na sasa wakaguzwa ama wakaponywa na Roho Mtakatifu. And they were very happy. Wakawa wa furaha zaidi. But after they were all committed in a church. Lakini sasa walipoingia wakapewa majukumu ndani ya kanisa. They learned that they should serve God. Wakajifundisha kwamba lazima wakamtumikie Mungu. But when they start to serve God, people start to demand them to be better. Lakini walipoendelea kumtumikia Mungu, kuna wale ambao waliwahitaji watumike vizuri zaidi and they always complain to themselves you are not doing well enough. Na sasa hata wenyewe wameanza kujihukumu na kusema kwamba hata sijafanya vizuri zaidi. So they feel pressure. Kwa hivyo wanasikia kana kwamba wamefinyiliwa. They don't have the simple joy when they first believe in Jesus. Yaani sasa hawana ile furaha waliokuwa nayo ya kwanza waliposikia kumhusu Kristo Yesu. So they always look at their shortcomings. Yaani sasa wanaangalia tu zile sehemu zao dhaifu. Also when they look at other Christians, pia wanapoangalia wakristo wengine, they will say he's not doing well enough. Namwambia kwamba wewe haufanyi vizuri vya kutosha, haufanyi vizuri vya kutosha. And, and they accuse the other Christians. Hata wengine basi wanaweza kwanza kwa kuambia wengine maneno ya kuwa hukumu. Let me ask you is this true of many Christians? Hebu niwaulize mambo haya anayoyafundisha ni ya ukweli katika maisha ya Ukristo. She will live under the law all the demand all the time. Je, inatupasa tuishi chini ya sheria kila wakati sheria ikitufinya? Or she will be motivated by the love of God to obey him. Ama inafaa basi tukachochewe na upendo wa Mungu ili tukamtii Mungu. It's a very big difference. Yaani kuna utofauti mkubwa zaidi. Now, even pastors, evangelists, or people who serve God, they may be saying, I have to bring more people to church, and I cannot bring the people to the church. I, I feel so insufficient. Hata unapata kwamba waingilisti ndio wamo kanisani, wanajitahidi sana wanasema, hebu nikafanye juu chini, niwaletee watu wengi katika Kristo Yesu. Nisipowaleta watu wengi katika Kristo Yesu, nasikia kwamba nimeshushwa roho. Je, Yesu anatuhukumu kila wakati? Or is it we ourselves accuse other people and accuse ourselves? Ama ni sisi tu wenyewe ambao tunahukumu wengine na kujihukumu sisi wenyewe? Ourselves, right? In the Bible we notice that Jesus is not accusing us. Katika Biblia tunagundua kwamba Yesu hajatuhukumu. He spoke harshly to the Pharisees and the and the scribes and the, uh, and the high priests. Yaani alizungumza kwa ukali mno na sauti ya juu kwa wale mafarisayo na mazadukayo. Because they were not following God. Kwa sababu hawako na mfuata Mungu. But for the Christians he did not accuse them. Lakini unapoangalia jinsi alivyokuwa akizungumza na wakristo, hakuwa akizungumza kwa kuwapigia kelele. Even when he points out the lack of faith, hata kama anapo eh, tambua ule udhaifu wa imani, he did not continue to say you have no hope. 
Yeye hakuendelea kila wakati kuambia kwamba jiji hamna tumaini, jiji hamna tumaini. But he said when you have faith like a mustard seed then you can even move the mountain. Lakini aliwaambia ukiwa na imani ndogo kama vile eh, mbegu ya haradali unaweza uka ambia milima iondoke na iondoke. So God is saying is God moves the mountain. Kwa hiyo Mungu ame Mungu ni Mungu anayesongesha hata milima. When you have faith in him, he can move the mountain. Kama uko na imani katika Kristo Yesu utaweza kusongesha milima. And when Jesus talk about don't worry when he talk about don't worry, Yesu anaposema kwamba msifadhaike, he said God has, you know, take care of the birds and the lilies. Angalia Mungu anawatunza wale nyuni wa angani na hata wale wanyama wa mwituni. So God knows your need before you pray. Yaani sasa wewe hata kama haujaomba mahitaji yako Mungu amekwisha kuyatambua. So God is molding us with his grace and his love. Kwa hivyo Mungu anatuchochea kwa neema yake na upendo wake. He molding us not to worry because God provides for us. Anatuambia kwamba basi tusije tukawa watu wa kuwa kwa kufadhaika maana yake ako na sisi pamoja. He molding us to have faith in God because God can move the mountains. Anatuchochea ili kwamba tuwe na hiyo imani tukawa kuwa na nguvu za kuambia milima iende na inaenda. Now, this session here is very very important. Basi fundisho hili ni la muhimu sana kwako wewe. I will go through some passages to let us see the heart of God. Nataka basi tuende tupitie katika mistari ya Biblia tuone moyo wa Mungu kuhusu mambo haya ni then our relationship with God will be very different. Na sasa tukimaliza kipindi hiki uhusiano wako na Mungu utakuwa umebadilika kiasi. Amen. Okay. Now so we can write this Bible verses down but you don't need to look up because you look up it takes too much time. Aya, uandike tu mistari ya Biblia hii ya Biblia hii utajisomea mwenyewe. Maana tukisema usome tachukua muda mwingi mno. Okay? Now the first verse is you can write down Matthew 9 verse 20 to 22. Matayo sura ya 9 mstari wa verses mstari wa 20 hadi 22. Matayo sura ya 9 mstari wa 20 hadi 22. Okay? Now this woman has bleeding for 12 years. Sasa mwanamke huyu katika maandiko haya amekuwa na ugonjwa wa kutokwa na damu kwa muda wa miaka 12. According to the Old Testament law, he has offended the Old Testament law. Basi kulingana na zile shi huyo mama amekuwa mchafu. But in order to touch Jesus, she has to touch many people. Lakini sasa yeye kitambo alipofikia kumguza Kristo Yesu ina maana kwamba alikuwa ameoguza watu wengi kabisa. Because there was a big crowd behind Jesus. Manake kulikuwa na kusanyiko kubwa na watu nyuma ya Kristo Yesu. And when these people were following Jesus, they were with very tight Uh, and closing Jesus. Na sasa hawa watu walivyokuwa kimfuata Kristo Yesu hakukuwa na nafasi rahisi ya kumfikia Yesu. But this woman has been desperate. Lakini huyu mwanamke alikuwa katika hali ya upweke. She has spent all of her money, yani alikuwa ametumia fedha zake zote and the condition has got worse. Lakini hali yake ndio ilivyozidi kudhoofika. And she heard about Jesus. Akasikia kumuhusu Kristo Yesu. She knew that Jesus was her only hope. Na sasa akajua kwamba Kristo Yesu ndiye tumaini lake pekee. So she wanted to touch Jesus to be healed and then go away secretly. Alikuja katika njia ya siri akamguze Kristo Yesu na tena atoweke katika njia ya siri. And then she touched Jesus, akamguza Yesu and she experienced immediately immediate healing. Na alipomguza tu hivi akapokea uponyaji pap. She thought she can run away. Na sasa kabla yeye akimbia muondokee Kristo Yesu But Jesus said, who touched me? Na Yesu alikuwa ameshasikiliza akajua akauliza nani huyo aliyenikusa. And the disciples said, everyone is touching you. Why did you ask that? Na sasa wanafunzi wake wakamwambia kwamba watu ni wengi. Sasa kila mtu anakupapasa papo. Sasa tutajua mbona unauliza mtu amekuguza? But they look, he said, someone touched me because power has come out from me. Lakini Yesu akasema nina uhakika mtu ameguza manake nasikia nguvu zimenipungukia. And then the woman admitted that she touched Jesus. Na yule mwanamke kabla hakimbie akakamatwa na akasema kwamba ni mimi ndimi niliyekuguza. Imagine that you were the woman. Hebu fikiria kwamba ungelikuwa ni wewe yule mwanamke. You would be very afraid. Ungeliogopa sana manake ile hali uliyokuwa nayo haikubaliki. She would be afraid that Jesus may accuse her. Maana sasa alikuwa na uwa kwamba kwamba Yesu ataanza kumhukumu. She was afraid that Jesus would say why did you touch everyone else and then 
you know, and, and uh, that everyone is unclean because of you. Yani mwanamke huyo alikuwa na uoga manake alisikia kwamba Yesu atamuuliza, "Mbona umewaguza hawa watu wote? Manake alikuwa mchafu. Kama angelikuguza wewe pia ungehesabiwa kuwa mchafu." But he said what Jesus said to her was surprising to everyone. Kile ambacho Yesu alimwambia kilishangaza kila mtu. She said, "Take heart, daughter. Your faith has healed you." Akamwambia, "Jipe moyo binti yangu, imani yako imekuponya." Now take heart means don't worry. Yaani jipe moyo inamaanisha kwamba usifadhaike. Relax. Pumzika. Let go. Wacha hayo mambo yaende. So so it shows the nature of God. Kwa hiyo inaonyesha uwasilia wa Mungu. Now in this few days when I go through my verses, I will show you God's nature. Basi kwenye vipindi hivi ambavyo tumesalia navyo kila wakati nitakapokuwa nikienda katika mstari wa Biblia nitakuonyesha uasilia wa Mungu. This is a method of Bible study I call God's nature Bible study. Hii ni mbinu ya kujifundisha Biblia inayoitwa eh, kujifundisha uasilia wa Mungu katika mstari wa Biblia. The more we understand God's nature the more we can enjoy God. Jinsi unavyoendelea basi kujua uasilia wa Mungu ndivyo unavyoendelea kujua Mungu ni nani. So here it shows that Jesus care about her feelings. Kwa hivyo hii inamaanisha kwamba Yesu anajali alijali sana hisia za huyo mama. So Jesus said to her, "Don't worry. Take heart." Yesu akamwambia, "Usijali, jipe moyo." So it means that Jesus care about her feeling is not saying oh you have sinned. Inamaanisha kwamba hata wewe Yesu anakutunza sana hajali dhambi zako anakuja kutunzi japokuwa wewe ni mtendadamu So when we are in trouble kwa hivyo tunapokuwa katika matatizo God cares about our feeling Yesu anatunza sana hisia zetu God cares about your feeling now because most of us are under the law. Yesu anajali sana hisia zetu kwa sababu sisi wengi tunaishi chini ya sheria. We know that we are saved by grace through faith in Jesus Christ. Tunajua kwamba tumeokolewa katika njia ya neema kwa imani kuwa na imani kwa Kristo Yesu. But very often the sense of responsibility is very heavy on us. Lakini sasa ule mzigo ambao inafaa tujukumike kwetu umekuwa mzigo mzito sana. The responsibility of home responsibility in church and una majukumu nyumbani una majukumu kanisani una majukumu kule unakofanya kazi and the responsibility of ministry na pia una majukumu hata ya huduma it makes many people live under pressure inafanya watu wanaishi chini ya kufinyiliwa but what I'm saying is when we know that Jesus cares about us now kila nasema kwamba tukitambua kwamba Yesu anatujali hata sasa hivi not only when we first believe in Jesus sio tu kwamba anaanza kutujali wakati tulipomwamini but every day lakini yeye anatujali kila siku so we can pray like this kwa hivyo tunaweza kuomba namna hivi Jesus you care about my situation and my feeling now Oh Yesu unajali hali yangu na hata hisia zangu sasa hivi. You care about that I'm under pressure now. Unanijali ijapokuwa nimefinyiliwa chini zaidi. You care about my guilt feeling. Yaani unajali hata mambo yale niliyoekewa. You care about my burden. Wewe unajali hata mizigo niliyozibeba. Does it make you feel Relax when you know that Jesus cares about, about your faith. Yeah, unapogundua kwamba Yesu anakujali. Hiyo inakufanya unakuwa na amani ama inakufanya usiwe na amani. <laughs> yes. So we all need that love. Kwa hiyo tunahitaji sisi sote ule upendo. Now for many couples, kwa hivyo wale wanandoa wengi, they will talk like this. Watazungumza hivi. One person say I'm unhappy. Mungu anasema kwamba mimi sina furaha. The other person say trust in God and you won't be unhappy. Sasa kama ni mke anamwambia mume kwamba sina furaha, mume na hata mwambie, wewe mwamini Mungu, Mungu atakupa furaha. You are unhappy because you don't trust in God. Wewe hauna furaha kwa sababu ulikataa kumwamini Mungu. You are unhappy because you don't have a good relationship with God. Wewe hauna furaha kwa sababu hauna uhusiano mzuri na Mungu. Now for human beings very easy to accuse. Is it true? Katika wanadamu ni rahisi sana mwanadamu kuhukumu mwingine. Even ni ukweli ama uongo. Even for ourselves, hata sisi wenyewe, we very often say I didn't do so well. 
Hata sisi wenyewe tunapofanya vitu hatujiamini. Tunasema kwamba aina hiyo nimefanya vizuri kweli. So we don't care much about our own feet. Anataka wewe ukae na uburudike. And that's what Jesus said in Matthew 11:28. Kitu ndicho ambacho Yesu anasema katika Mathayo sura ya 11 mstari wa 28. Come to me all you who are weary and burdened I'll give you rest. Jioni kwangu wale walio bebeshwa mizigo mzito na kuchoshwa na mimi nitawapa pumziko. So here also it talks about Jesus care for our feelings. Here pia inazungumza kuhusu Yesu kujali hisia zetu. When we feel pressure, tunapohisi kwamba tumefinyiliwa shida. He said come to me. Yesu anasema johoni kwangu. I can give you rest. Nitakupa pumziko. So you don't have to carry the burdens. Ili kwamba usije na ukabeba mizigo. And then the next thing he said to the woman. Kitu kingine alichomwambia huyo binti. He said daughter. Akamuita binti. The woman must be very surprised. Yaani huyo mwanamke lazima alishangaa sana. She would think she is a sinner. Huyo mwanamke alitambua kwamba yeye ni mtanadhamu. But Jesus said daughter. Lakini Yesu badala ya kumuita mtanadhamu, anamuita binti, anamuita binti yangu. I have a close relationship with you. Niko na uhusiano mzuri na wewe. You are my daughter. Wewe ni binti yangu. So as a daughter you don't have to worry kwa sababu sasa wewe ni binti ya Kristo Yesu. Haufai kuwa na eh, eh, because I care because I care about you. Kwa sababu Yesu anakujali. Now from this we can see God's nature. Aha, katika mstari huu pia tunaweza kuona uasilia wa Mungu. He wants to he wants to have a close relationship with us. Yaani Mungu anataka tuwe na uhusiano wa karibu na yeye. We are his children. Sisi ni wana wa Mungu. So he will say to you, kwa hiyo Mungu atakwambia, son, daughter. Atakuita mwana na binti. Don't worry. Usijali. I care about you. Mimi ninakujali. I want a close relationship with you. Nataka tuwe na uhusiano wa karibu na wewe. I want to bless you. Nataka nikubariki. You don't have to worry. Yaani usije ukakuwa na mambo ya ya kufedhaisha kabisa. And then Jesus said, na Yesu akasema, your faith has healed you. Imani yako imekuponya. Now in the Bible in the book of Romans it says that faith is you know is opposed to work. You know what we do. Faith is by faith that means it's not by work. Aha. Maandiko yanayosema imani ya kwamba imani ni imani sio kwamba imani ni yale matendo tunayoyatenda. So it's not by works that you are cured. Kwa hivyo unapoponywa sio kwamba umeponywa kwa sababu umetenda matendo mazuri. It's by faith. Umeponywa kwa sababu ya imani. When you believe it's done for you. Ya kwamba kama unaamini mambo yote na kutendekea. That means it's not by our good work. Inamaanisha kwamba hiyo sio kwa sababu ya matendo yetu mema. Very often Christians think wa Kristo wengi wao wanafikiria I have to earn the favor of God. Ya kwamba mimi sina kibali mbele za Mungu. But actually when you trust in God, lakini unapomwamini Mungu, God will bless us. Mungu atakubariki. God is very happy to bless us. Mungu ako na furaha kutubariki. So you can say this few words kwa hivyo unaweza kusema maneno haya macheche. Yeah, Jesus said to the woman, ya kwamba Yesu yale ambayo Yesu alimwambia mwanamke. You can say it to yourself. Una many times. Ujiambie hayo maneno safari nyingi sana yale maneno ambayo Yesu alimwambia. Many times a day. Yaani kwa siku unayatamka maneno hayo mengi. You can say it to yourself. Unajiambia wewe mwenyewe. Son, daughter. And busy na mwana. Don't worry. Usijali. Relax. Kaotulie. I'll help you. Ntakusaidia. You just trust in me, you believe it will be done for you. Yaani unamwamini Mungu na unaamini na Mungu anakutendea. So you don't have to worry. Kwa hiyo yaani haikufai sio kwamba uwe mtu wa wa kufadhaika tu. You don't have to be burdened. Usije ukabebeshwa mizigo. I'm here for you. Yaani Yesu ako hapa kwa ajili yako. I want a close relationship with you. Anataka tu uwe na uhusiano na yeye. Now the more you read the Bible, jinsi unavyoendelea kusoma Biblia, the more you understand the grace of God in the Bible. Hapo ndipo utakuja kuelewa kuhusu neema ya Mungu katika Biblia. But I have to say this. Lakini ni ngumu sana kusema ndio. Even many teachers of the Bible hata walimu wengi wa Biblia when they teach the Bible is a lot of law wanapofundisha Biblia wanatumia sana sheria they will say you have to trust in God you have to trust in God asasema kwamba they will say how walimu watasema kwamba lazima ukaamini Mungu if you don't trust in God you have no strength 
Kama hautamwamini Mungu hautakuwa na nguvu. So you have to trust in God. Kwa Mungu. And this is very different from how Jesus said it. Hiyo ni tofauti sana vile Yesu alivyosema. Jesus said like this. Yesu alisema hivi, relax don't worry. Kaa utulie usijali. You're my child. Wewe ni mwanangu. You're my son, my daughter. Wewe ni binti yangu, wewe ni mwanangu. When you trust in me, I will do it for you. Ukiniamini mimi nitakufanyia. Amen. Is it very different? Tumeona utofauti. That's under the grace of God. Yaani hayo inamaanisha kwamba uko chini ya neema ya Mungu. Amen. And I hope, you know, I'm going to go through some passages. I hope that you will see God's grace. Na ninataka kwenda kupitia kwenye mistari ya Biblia na mimi utaona neema ya Mungu katika hizo mistari. So we can enjoy God all the time. Ya kwamba kila siku utafurahia kuwa na Bwana kila wakati. This is a very important teaching in the Bible. Fundisho la muhimu sana kwenye Biblia. But because many teachers of the Bible themselves are under the law, they are knowing it. Na hivi kwa sababu walimu wengi wa Biblia wako chini ya sheria. Because You know, Christians, pastors and teachers they all believe we are saved by grace through faith. Ndio watu wengi hata walimu wa Biblia na walimu wa sheria wanasema kwamba tumeokolewa kwa njia ya imani, kwa njia neema tukiwa na imani kwa Kristo Yesu. But when they come to the responsibilities, lakini inapokuja wakati wa majukumu, they always say you have to do it. Wanasema lazima ufanye hayo. Now instead, this is how Jesus said. Badala hivyo Yesu alisema hivi. Na Because people will say don't worry kwa sababu watu wanasema usijali but Jesus said like this lakini Yesu alisema hivi the father knows your needs before you pray baba yangu anajua mahitaji yako hata kabla hujaomba he can feed the birds and the, and, and, and decorate the lilies anaweza hata kuwapa wale nyuni wa angani vya kula na viumbe vingine vyote so he can provide for you atakuwa wewe anaweza So you don't need to worry. Kwa usijali. So Jesus used the grace of God to motivate us not to worry. Kwa hivyo Yesu alitumia neema ya Mungu ili kutufanya sisi tusiwe watu wa kukaa kama tumefadhaika. He did not just say don't worry. Hakusema tu usijali. Now for people sometimes they also accuse. Kwa wakati mwingine watu wanapenda sana kuhukumu. They will say you worry too much. Wanaweza kukwambia kwamba wewe mbona unawaza zaidi? So you have many problems. Una matatizo mengi ndio maana unawaza zaidi. This is accusation. Hiyo ni kuhukumu. But people don't know it. Ki watu hawafahamu kwamba ni kuhukumu because most of the time people talk negatively like that. Kwa sababu kila wakati watu wanaongea maneno kinyume kama hayo. In the family many husband and wife talk to each other like that. Katika familia mume na mke basi wanazungumziana maneno kama hayo. They will say go do it quickly. Eh kama ni mume atamwambia mke nipelekee maji ya kuoga haraka. You think do what I told you to do. Mbona hujaosha ile mashati niliyokuambia uwashe. I'm frustrated with you. Yaani mimi nimekasirishwa sana na wewe. Have you found this in the family? Katika familia mmeona mambo kama haya? That's the law, right? Yo ni sheria. Instead we can say like this. Lakini badala ya kutumia sheria unaweza zungumza hivi. I'm happy to have you. Eh, mbona sasa unasikia vile unafaa kumwambia mkeo? I wonder if you can furaha sana kuwa na wewe. I wonder if you talk to your spouse like this. I'm happy to have you. Sijui kama kuna mtu ambaye anaambia mmewe ama mkeo maneno kama haya kwamba yani kikuona jamani. I say this to my wife all the time. Yeye anamwambia mkeo kila wakati. And she said it to me all the time. Na pia yeye mkeo anamwambia hivyo kila wakati. I say you're very precious. Na yeye anamwambia jamani wewe ni mwanamke wangu. Ninakupenda. And whatever you do for me I'm very happy. Chochote so, tunachonifanyia mimi nafurahishwa sana. And when you help me I'm very happy. Na ukinisaidia nitakuwa na furaha zaidi. I'm so happy to have you. Na mimi niko na furaha sana kuwa na wewe. So when I ask you to do something I always have a lot of grace in it. Kwa hivyo yeye anapomwomba mkeo kumfanyia kitu anatumia neema sana. So when like people talk to the children, this is when they want to never say you don't do well. Sasa kama ni ni, ni mzazi anamwambia mwanawe hajafanya vizuri shuleni, mbona hujafanya hivi shuleni? You don't study. Mbona wewe hausomi kwa nguvu? And the child is a lot of time will say you become a beggar. Na sasa unokisha mwambia hivyo kwamba mbona wewe hausomi eh, kwa bidii? Utakuwa mtu wa kuomba watu vitu. But instead we can say, lakini tunaweza kuambia hivi 
And when you study, you are doing very well. This is motivation by the grace of God. This is motivation by the grace of God. And then when we talk to Christians, we can talk like this. God has a wonderful plan in your life. Jamani Mungu ana mpango mzuri sana katika maisha yako. His son and his daughter. Wewe ni mwanae na wewe ni binti yake. He enjoys a close relationship with you. Jamani Mungu anafurahishwa sana uhusiano wa karibu na wewe. And when you talk to him he's very happy. Unapozungumza na yeye anafurahia sana. When you obey him he's very happy. Unapomtii Mungu anafurahia sana. Even when you give a cup of cold water he will, he will by no means lose your reward. Yaani hata unapopenda kikombe cha maji baridi hautapoteza dawa yako. Now when we don't make people like this, tunapobasi wachochea watu kwa njia hii, they feel that they are important. Hao watu pia wanahisi kwamba ah, kumbe mimi ni mtu wa muhimu hivyo. Mwema. You don't obey God. Hata haumtii Mungu you become more and more terrible sasa unaendelea kuwa mtu mbaya zaidi so i hope we all avoid talking like that ninatumainia kwamba basi tutajizuia hata kwa tunaongea maneno mazito mazito hivyo kwa wao let us look at some bible verses and see how god talks to us basi wacha tuone katika mistari mingine ya kibiblia tuone vile mungu anayotuzungumzia I say a 49 verse 15. Isaiah 49 mstari wa 15. Isaiah 49 mstari wa 15. Isaiah. Oh. Can a mother forget the baby at her breast and have no compassion on the child she has born? Though she may forget, I will not forget you. Isaiah 49 verse 15. Isaiah 49 mstari wa 15. Unasema hivi je? Mama anaweza kusahau kumnyonyesha mwanae ama mama anaweza kwenda dukani akamsahau huko mwanae basi kwa sababu mama hawezi kusahau hata Mungu baba yako hatawahi kusahau hivyo hivyo How many mothers are here? Ni wangapi hapa ambao ni wamama? Do really have a baby or a child? Na uko na watoto? Okay. Have you forgotten your baby when you took the ferry? come to come to the island have you forgotten your baby in the ferry wakati ulipokuwa kule kivukoni ulipoingia kwenye kile kivukio have you wakati ulipotoka ndani ulisahau mtoto wako have you forgotten your baby in a shop je ushawahi enda dukani kuemea vitu alafu kasahau mtoto kachukua vitu na unamwacha huko mtoto no let me ask you have you forgotten your umbrella do you need some umbrella here do you have you forgotten your umbrella somewhere unajua umbrella Mwavuli have you forgotten your umbrella? Ushawe usahau mahali. Mwavuli na usahau. You forgotten your umbrella sometimes, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you never forget your baby, right? Lakini hausahau mtoto, si ndio? Mwavuli unaweza kusahau lakini mtoto how can we not forget your your baby? Basi inafanyikaje uwezo ukamsahau mtoto? Mwanao. Because God doesn't forget us. Ni kwa sababu pia Mungu naye hajawahi kusahau. And he put that heart of care in our hearts na pia akaweka katika mioyo zetu kule moyo wa kutunza so that we will remember the babies ili kwamba tutawakumbuka wana wetu wale and when you walk around you look at the ducks and the, and the chicken and the monkeys they all take care of the young hata right? unapoangalia huko nje unaona wale mnawahitaji hawa wanyama yeah. au tumbili kama ako na mtoto anaweza kumsahau kweli anatembea naye sio because God has this nature of caring for us and never forgetting us. Ni kwa sababu huyu Mungu ana uwasilie wa kutujali sisi hajawahi tusahau hata siku moja. Therefore he created human beings and animals and this love. Kwa hivyo aliumba wanadamu na hata wanyama akiwaweka upendo. Akiwa aliwaumba kwa upendo. So you can remind ourselves, we can remind ourselves every day like this. Kwa hivyo unaweza jikumbusha kila wakati mambo kama haya. God is remembering me now. Ya kwamba Mungu ananikumbuka sasa hivi. He's thinking of me now. Anawaza kunihusu mimi sasa hivi. Now, he says that he cannot forget us. Na kwa sababu hawezi, amesema kwamba hawezi akatusahau. 
Is there a second that he forgets us? Is there a second? Second, a minute, a second. A second. Is there a second that he forgets us? Amesema kwamba hawezi akatusahau. Je, kuna kuna dakika yote ambayo Mungu ametusahau? No. So God's nature is kwa hivyo uasilia wa Mungu ni he treasure his people. Yeye anawadhamini sana watu wake. He remembers us. Yaani anatukumbuka. He takes care of us. Yeye anatulinda and he wants to help us. Na angalitaka kutusaidia. So when we believe that, kwa hivyo tunapoamini hivyo, all day long we can say, ya kwamba kila siku sasa waweza kusema, God is remembering me now. Mungu ananikumbuka sasa hivi. God is thinking of me now. Mungu ananiwaza sasa hivi. God is caring for me now. Ananijali sasa hivi. Does it give you comfort? Je, hiyo inakupa pumziko? Now some people might say how do I know God is remembering me? Watu wengine watasema nitajuaje kwamba Mungu ananikumbuka? Okay, let me give you a couple verses. Hebu nikakupe mstari mwingine. First is John 16 verse 8. Yohana sura ya 6 mstari wa 8. Yohana sura ya 6 mstari wa 8. There it says that the Holy Spirit came. He said Jesus will send the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit will convict the world of sin, of righteousness and of judgment. Sema kwa babasi, Yesu atakapokwenda atamtuma roho mtakatifu ambaye atakuja kutuhukumu sisi to remind us of our sins. Basi sisi kama wakristo tumekwisha kuwa na msukumo wa roho mtakatifu na hapo tena dhambi anatusukuma tutubu. When we became a Christian Someone preached to you tell you the gospel and then he reminds you of your sins, right? Wakati mtu alipokuwa anahubiri injili wewe ulikuwa haujawakoka. Alipohubiri injili akakukumbusha dhambi zako na wewe ukapata kuokoka. And the Holy Spirit convicts us of our sins so we repent. Na sasa Roho Mtakatifu yeye ndiye anayetukumbusha dhambi zetu ili tutubu. After we became a Christian, do we obey God all the time? Je, tulipofanyika wa Kristo tunaendelea kumtii Mungu kila dakika? Yes. We obey God all the time. Tunamtii Mungu kila wakati? Amen. I'm asking you the fact. I'm asking you the fact. Do you do you always obey God and never sin? Je, hakuna yote yule ambaye anatenda dhambi? Do we sin? Tunatenda dhambi? Do we sin? Yes, we do. But when we sin, does God leave us? Na je, Tunapotenda dhambi, je Mungu anatuachilia? Or does the Holy Spirit move in your heart and remind us of our sins? Ama Roho Mtakatifu anaanza kukumbusha kuhusu dhambi zako. Does the Holy Spirit remind you of your sins? Je, Roho Mtakatifu anakukumbusha kuhusu dhambi zako? And you notice that when you try to forget the moving of the Holy Spirit, you try to do something else, the Holy Spirit keep reminding us until we repent. Umeshawahi gundua hata kama unajifanya kwamba umesahau kile umekitenda, hata unafanya mambo mengine, lakini Roho Mtakatifu anaendelea kukumbusha. How many of you have that experience? So the Holy Spirit will keep reminding you until you repent. Ni wakati ambao washawahi pitia mambo kama haya, kwamba amekushukana dhambi, anajifanya mesahau, lakini Roho Mtakatifu anaendelea kukumbusha kila wakati, wakati washapitia huko kama. Okay, very good. All Christians should have that experience. That means when we do not obey, God doesn't forsake us. In a manner of saying, but if you obey, you have to do it. I am a manner of saying, but you have to do it. When we disobey, He still moves in our hearts. Hata wakati ambapo sisi hatujati, yeye Mungu anaendelea kutunenea katika mioyo zetu. That means God doesn't forget us even when we sin. Inamaanisha kwamba Mungu hatujatusahau hata kama tunatenda dhambi. And then when we praise God, do we experience joy and peace? Je, sasa tunapo tunapo end. Tunapo anza kumsifu Mungu. Tunaanza kusikia kwamba tumefarijika. Do you experience peace and joy when you praise God? Wakati tunapo kuwa katika sifa na maabudu. Je, unasikia kwamba umeanza umetulizwa? Unasikia mizigo imeondolewa? Amen. So, when we sin, God remember us. Tunapotenda dhambi, bado Mungu anatukumbuka. And then when we obey him, he remembers us. Na pia tunapomtii, anatukumbuka. And he bless us, anatubariki. So that means in all time when we disobey or when we obey, 
God is with us all the time. Wakati wote, wakati atujati, wakati tumeti, Mungu yuko pamoja nasi. So we see that God remembers us all the time. Unaona sasa Mungu anatukumbuka kila wakati. How many of you when you face some problem and then you know this God helps you miraculously? Raise your hand if you have that experience. That you have some trouble and then God helps you miraculously. And then if you have that experience, raise your hand. See, hili ni swala sema uinuwe mkono kama usha pitia mambo kama hai. Kwa mfano, umekua katika matatizo, hawijuta nzia wapi. Na gao, gao, unasemani? Gao labim, vu, msahala unapatikana. Usha wai pitia mambo kama hai. Mutu usha wai pitia mambo kama hai. Okay, very good. So God has helped you in difficult times. Kwa hivyo Mungu anakusaidia hata wakati uko katika vipindi vigumu. Did he forget you? Alikusahau? No. So we should remember all these instances when God helps us. Basi ni lazima pia nasi tukumbuke matukio haya yote ambayo Mungu ametusaidia. And remember all the instances when the Holy Spirit reminds us of that. Pia kukumbuke hayo matukio ambayo Roho Mtakatifu anatukumbusha kuhusu dhambi zetu. And remember how God gives us peace and joy. Na hata ukumbuke vile Mungu anavyokupa amani na furaha. Then we know that God is with us all the time and blessing us all the time. Yaani unyue Mungu ako na wewe kila wakati anatubariki kila wakati. So I hope that we all remember God remembers me all the time. Na tumaini kwamba kila mmoja utakumbuka kwamba Mungu anamkumbuka kila wakati. And whenever, whenever we pray we feel the peace of God. Na tunapoomba tunahisi amani ya Mungu. We say thank you Lord. Tunasema asante Bwana. You are remembering me. Unanikumbuka. You are blessing me with your joy. Unanibariki kwa furaha yako na neema yako. You are with me now. Uko na mimi sasa hivi. Do you find it true? Je, haya mambo yanayozungumza unaonekana kwamba ni ya ukweli? Any time any where you pray you can experience his peace and his joy. Wakati wowote unapoomba utahisi amani na furaha ya Bwana. Have you noticed this? Yeah. So God is with us all the time. Kwa hivyo Mungu ako na sisi kila wakati. Yeah. Okay, and it's different verse Zephaniah 3:17. Zephaniah 3:17. Aha, kitabu kingine ni Zephaniah. Not not Zephaniah. 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 Sura ya tatu. Zephaniah. Zephaniah. Sura ya tatu mstari wa kumina saba. Zephaniah kumina mstari wa tatu. Ah, sura ya tatu. Mustari wa kumina saba. Okay. Kiswahili. The second part of this verse. Sehemu ya pili ya mustari huo. He will take great delight in you. He will quiet you with his love. He will rejoice over you with singing. Ya kwamba mungu. He will take great delight in you. He will quiet you with his love. He will rejoice over you with singing. Ya kwamba mungu atafuraiswa na wewe. Na atafuraiswa na wewe. Na akupe furaha yake. Now here is. Some people think of God. To be like a judge. What we mean is when I speak about Mungu, Mungu, judge ni nani ba? Hakim. Ni Hakim. They think that God doesn't have feelings. When I speak about Mungu, Mungu hana hisia. They think that God doesn't smile. When I speak about Mungu, Mungu huwa tapasam. But this verse says, "Lakini mstari huu na sem." He takes great delight in you. Ya kwamba Mungu anakuwa na furaha kuna wewe. He is very happy with you. Yani amefurahishwa sana na wewe. And he will quiet you with his love. Na sasa atakufunika na upendo wake. It's like a baby crying. Ni kama vile mtoto leza kwa upendo wake. The more we believe in the love of God, the more we can experience his love. Tunafyo endelea kuamini upendo wa mungu. Ni unafyo endelea kuhisi upendo wa mungu. In 1998, when Carl Sanacondia, the evangelist from Argentina, came to Hong Kong. Mwaka wa... Mwaka wa 98 kulikuwa na mwinjilisti mmoja kutoka Argentina alienda kwao anaitwa Carlos and then he laid hand on me na huyo mwinjilisti akamwekea mikono and I experienced great love fill my heart akahisi upendo furaha kubwa imejaza roho yake I experienced great power go through me akasikia nikana kwamba like that akasema sikuwahi jua kwamba naweza kumhisi Mungu kama hivi 
And then I spent a long time praying every day. Later, I found that whenever I think of Jesus, his joy will flow through me. Yani upendo wake utabubujika na limwa. Any time I think of Jesus, hata sasa wakati anapofikiria kuhusu Yesu, show of the king coming. Hallelujah. Anasikia upendo unaingia ndani mwake mpaka anachemka. But I can control it any time. Lakini anaweza pia kudhibiti huo. Any time I let go, ya kwamba kila wakati anachilia unaenda. The joy of the king coming. Ah, yani kila wakati anapoachilia mizigo zikienda, furaha ya Mungu inaingia ndani mwake. Now hope this time when I'm here in these few days You open your heart to God that some of you experience that joy. Na ninatumainia kwamba hizi siku chache ambazo niko hapa watu watafungua roho zao ili kwamba wakahisi upendo wa Mungu. So we can experience his joy and his love. Ili kwamba tukapate kuhisi upendo wa Mungu na furaha ya Mungu. And now whenever I think of Jesus, na sasa anapofikiria kumhusu Yesu, ya kwamba kweli Yesu ni wa kweli. How many of you experience Something good comes to you when you pray or worship. Je, ni wangapi kati yenu ambao wakati mko katika kuabudu ama kuomba, unasikia ni kana kwamba kuna kitu kipya kinaingia ndani mwako? How many of you experience that? Wangapi wanahisi kitu kama hizo? Okay, that is the Holy Spirit coming bringing you joy and peace and love. Yaani wewe ndio Roho Mtakatifu anashuka, anakuja, anakupa upendo, furaha nakubembeleza that is God showing us that he is a joyful and a loving God yani huyu ni Mungu anakuonyesha kwamba Mungu ni wa upendo na ana furaha na sisi but many people don't connect the joy to God lakini watu wengi walishindwa kuunganisha huu upendo hii furaha na Mungu they just think when i praise and worship i feel very happy wanasema tu wakati ninapoimba na kucheza hapo ndipo nafurahisha they do not realize that it's God who brings us the joy and the love lakini hawaje kugundua kwamba unavyocheza na kufurahia hauja kugundua kwamba ni Mungu ndiye anayeachilia mambo hayo kuja. So if we tell ourselves God is loving me now and blessing me now. Lakini unapojiambia kwamba Mungu unanipenda sasa hivi unanibariki sasa hivi, they will say wow God is so good to me. Utasema kwamba haya kumbe Mungu ni mwema kwangu. I can enjoy God anytime. Ninaweza nikasherehekea Mungu kila wakati. Let me tell you, hebu nikwambie. Most of the time I'll be thinking about God most of the day. Kila wakati na kila siku wanafikiria kuhusu Yesu. And even now when I'm thinking of God, hata sasa hivi ninapofikiri kuhusu Mungu, his joy and his love and his power will go through me. Upendo wake na nguvu zake Mungu zinabubujika ndani mwake. Isn't that a great gift? Je, hicho sio kipawa kikubwa. That we can experience his love and joy like that. Kama unaweza pia wewe ukahisi upendo wa Mungu na furaha ya Mungu sampuli hii. That is God showing us we can have You know, we can experience his joy and love. Yaani huyo ni Mungu anakuambia kwamba unaweza kuhisi upendo wa Mungu na furaha ya Mungu. So we can enjoy God all the time. Kwa hivyo unaweza ukasherehekea Mungu kila wakati. When I do my teaching, anapofanya mafundisho yake, I told many people, anaambia watu wengi, please try to enjoy God more. Hebu jaribu kufurahisha furahia Bwana kila wakati. Spend more time loving God. Chukua muda wako mwingi ukimuomba Mungu. Now I don't mean in a way of the law. Simaanishi katika njia ya sheria. The way of the law would be like this. Njia ya sheria itakuwa kama hivi. You have to pray for many hours. Lazima uombe masaa mengi. Whenever people say you have to do it, then it's pressure. Kama watu mtu anasema kwamba ni lazima ufanye hivi basi wewe say lakini unaposema God is very happy when we come to him ya kwamba Mungu ana furaha unapokuja mbele zake And whenever we pray we experience his joy and peace unapoomba unahisi upendo na amani ya Bwana That means God is pouring his love in our hearts Ina maanisha Mungu anaachilia upendo wake ndani yetu He is anatubariki so we can enjoy praying to him Kwa hivyo ina pasta tu tu tusherekee kuomba Mungu. Is there a big difference? Je, hapo umeona utofauti? If people just say you have to pray many hours, yaani watu wanakuambia lazima uombe zaidi masaa mengi. That becomes pressure. Hiyo inakuwa kwamba umesukumwa kufanya jambo hili. But people say, lakini mtu akisema, God is happy to come to you. Mungu wako na furaha kuja kwako. Any time you talk to him, na kila wakati unaponena naye. Any time you love him, kila wakati unapompenda. He will come to you and bless you. Atakuja kwako na kusaidia. And you can enjoy him. Na wewe utasherekea Mungu. And you will be full of strength. 
na joy utakuwa na nguvu zaidi na furaha zaidi this is different umeona tofauti it's like me and my wife ni kwa mfano yeye na mkewe she doesn't say you have to spend so much time with me yani mkewe huwa amwambii lazima ukae na mimi masaa mengi but she's always happy when i'm with um, when i'm with her lakini huyo mkewe anakuwa na furaha nyingi anapokuwa naye sometimes i say to her tonight we have time wakati mimi anamuuliza je usiku wa leo una nafasi he means she will laugh yani anaposikia hivyo atacheka what do you have in mind what do you she asked me what do you have in your mind alafu baada ya mkewe kumchekea kwa sababu ameamuliza usiku ndio kuna nafasi mkewe anacheka alafu anamuuliza katika mawazo yako kuna lipi and then i said i'll take a walk with you tonight anamwambia usiku nilipenda tuende tuzurure tuende tuende she will have you like a little child sasa huyo mkewe atakuwa na furaha kama mtoto mdogo she will have like a little child atacheka cheka akirukaruka she was say many times to me in that day kwa hivyo hiyo siku usiku kama haujafika atamwambia mambo mengi zaidi do you know why i'm so happy today anamtumia ujumbe kumuuliza unajua kwa nini nina furaha leo because you asked me to have a walk tonight kwa sababu umeniambia ni twende tutembee usiku nje that's how my wife is ndio ndio mkewe ali she is always happy with me ndio kwamba yeye ana furaha kila wakati naye and when she is happy with me na akiwa na furaha na yeye kila wakati he most motivates me to have more time with her pia yeye sasa inamchochea akuwe karibu na yeye kila wakati and i call her she is always happy kwa hivyo kila wakati anapomuita anakuwa na furaha do you want your relationship with god to be like that ungelipenda uhusiano wako na mungu ukuwe kama hivyo every time you pray you say god is coming to bless me kwa hivyo kila wakati unapoomba omba ukisema Mungu anakuja kunibariki. Haleluya. Haleluya. Haleluya Lord. I worship you. Haleluya. Yesu. Yesu. Yes, so can we enjoy God? We love to enjoy God. Je, unaweza pia kusherekea kuwa na Mungu vile yeye anavyosherekea kuwa na Mungu? When you listen to me explaining the Bible, unapomsikiliza, unapomsikiliza akieleza mistari ya Biblia, you see that you discover a lot of the grace of God. Yaani utagundua kwamba kuna neema kubwa ya Mungu. You know that God doesn't give us pressure. Unaona kwamba Mungu hakupi hakusukumi. God motivates us with his love. Ya kwamba Mungu anatuchochea kwa upendo wake. Tupigie Yesu makofi. That is why when I serve God now I serve with joy. Ndio maana anapomtumikia Mungu anamtumikia Mungu kwa furaha. Because he said if I give a cup of water to a little one kwa sababu anasema ninapopeana kikombe cha maji baridi kwa mdogo yule whenever I do a little thing for God ninapofanya jambo lolote ndogo kwa Mungu God is very happy Mungu ana furaha when I when I do all things and give you a cup of cold water ninapofanya vitu viwili kwa mfano kupeana kikombe cha maji baridi God is more happy Mungu ana furaha zaidi and you bless me and the people hata nibariki na watu wengine sema amen so so that's why I have to go to different countries ndio sababu hako na ule msukumo wa kwenda katika mataifa mengine mbalimbali because i know that god is very happy with anything i do kwa sababu anajua kwamba mungu anafurahishwa na yale anayoyatenda it's different from if someone says ni tofauti na vile mtu anavyoweza kusema i have to serve god lazima nikamtumikie mungu if i don't serve god kama si nitamtumikia mungu god is unhappy with me mungu hatafurahishwa na mimi is it different umeona tofauti hapo is very different ni tofauti zaidi sema amen you want to live in the love of god and the joy unaenda kuishi katika upendo wa mungu na furaha ya mungu this is teaching important je mafundisho haya ni ya muhimu is it in the bible na je yanapatikana kwenye biblia is god like this je mungu ni yule mtu wa kunyoshea vitu na kuombeza anakupigia kelele Christians like that. God is always encouraging Christians. Yaani Mungu kila wakati anawahimiza wakristo sema amen. He's only 
referring to the Pharisees that he warned them. Ni kwa wale tu mafarisayo peke yao alipo kuwa basi akiwatadharisha. But to the Christians who follow him, God is very happy. Lakini kwa Kristo ambao wanamfuata Yesu, Mungu anafurahishwa nao. Especially when we serve God. Asua sana tunapomtumikia Mungu. God is very happy with you. Mungu anafuraha na wewe. So all day long you can say, kwa hivyo kila siku masaa mengi unaweza kusema, I'm serving God and God is very happy. Ninamtumikia Mungu na Mungu anafuraha. I can enjoy serving God. Ninamrudika kumtumikia Mungu. When I worship God, ninapowaabudu Mungu, God is very happy. Mungu ana furaha. I can enjoy worshiping God. Ninaweza sherekea kumwabudu Mungu. So everything we do for God, kila kitu unachofanya kwa Mungu, and everything we do to bless people, kila kitu unachofanya kuwabariki watu wengine, we can be very happy. Yaani lazima tufanye kwa furaha. Is it biblical? Je, ni ya Biblia? Yes. But it's a fact that many Christians are like this. Lakini ni ukweli kwamba wakristo wengine wako hivi. Or I try to bring this person to Jesus and he doesn't believe in Jesus. And I feel very bad. I wonder how the church will grow and the church doesn't grow. I feel very bad. Does this sound familiar? Does this sound familiar? That means you've heard people. Wow. Instead we can say this. Instead we can say this. But leo kusema hivyo naweza kusema hivi. Even if the church doesn't grow, I can be happy every day. Hata kama kanisa halipanuki, mimi nitakuwa na furaha kila wakati. We can all enjoy God. Tunaweza wote kusherekea Bwana. And when the people enjoy God, na watu wanaposherekea Mungu, they can bring more people here. Wanaweza kuleta watu wengi hapa. And everyone comes to the church will be happy. Na kila mtu atakaye kuja kanisani atakuwa na furaha. People will come. Na watu wengi watakuja. But when people live under the law, lakini watu It's always saying you didn't do well enough. Yani ni kusema ni kunyoshea vidole haujafanya vizuri. You have to work harder. Lazima uweke bidii. Then everyone in the church, kila mmoja kanisani, they have to work harder. Sasa lazima wafanye kwa bidii umebeshwa mzigo mzito. Lot of pressure. Yani wamefinyiliwa chini. And when the people come to the church, na watu wanapokuja kanisani, the people have a lot of pressure. Sasa watu wako na mizigo mingi ya kubeba. They don't like to stay. Je, watu watafurahia kukaa hapo? But every day when we enjoy God, lakini kila siku kama kanisani mna furaha tunasherekea Mungu. People around us will be attracted to us. Yaani hata watu ambao wanakaa karibu na sisi watavutiwa na sisi. Now so when you read the Bible now, hebu unaposoma Biblia sasa, look at how Jesus talked to people. Angalia vile Yesu alivyokuwa akizungumza na watu. There are many examples in the Bible. Kuna mifano mingi katika Biblia. One example is Isaiah chapter 1. Mfano wa kwanza ni Isaya sura ya kwanza. Now we will read that. Atasoma kwa sababu ya Mungu. Chapter 1 of Isaiah is one of the most serious chapter of God pointing out the sin of the people of Israel. Aha, hicho kitabu cha Isaya sura ya kwanza ni kitabu ambacho kinazungumza kuhusu Mungu alipokuwa akiwaambia wana wa Israeli kuhusu dhambi zao. And God said you have sores from your head to your toe. Na Yesu aka Mungu anawaambia kwamba yani ninyi mmechafuka kutoka kwenye vichwa vyenu hadi kwenye miguu zenu. And you are people burdened with sins. Na nyinyi ni watu ambao mmebebeshwa na mmechokeshwa na dhambi. But then at the end of chapter 1, lakini mwisho wa sura ya kwanza, he said though your sin be like crimson, will be white as snow. Hata kama dhambi zenu zenu basi zitakuwa you don't imagine that in that chapter. Mwisho pale Mungu anasema hata kama dhambi zenu ni nyekundu kama nini? You go home and read that. You go home and read that. You go home and read that. Ebu utaenda nyumbani usome kitabu hicho. God was pointing out the sin of people. Mungu alikuwa anazungumza kuhusu dhambi za watu. And then he said, na akawaambia, Though your sins are like crimson, ijapokuwa dhambi zenu nyekundu zaidi. When you come to me you will be forgiven. Ukija kwangu utasamehewa. You will be white as snow. Ya kwamba utakuwa mweupe kama so don't worry. Kwa hivyo usijali. Just come to me. Njoo kwangu. Jerusalem and Israel has rejected God many years. Jerusalem, Jerusalem na Israeli wamemkataa Mungu miaka mingi iliyopita. But when Jesus went to Jerusalem, he said, Lakini Yesu alipokwenda Yerusalemu alisema, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, 
Yerusalemu, Yerusalemu. You have killed those I sent to you. Umewahua hata wale nilio watuma. You have stoned to death the prophets. Yaani umewapiga mawe manabii wote wamekufa. And I want to gather you. Na ninataka tena niwakusanye. Like a hen want to gather the chicks. Jinsi vile kuku anavyowakusanya pamoja vifaranga wao. You're not willing. Lakini nyinyi bado mmekataa. Israel has rejected God for many years. Israeli imemkataa Mungu kwa miaka mingi. And Jesus said, you know, I want to gather you. Na Yesu anasema nataka kuwakusanya tena. Even though you have stoned to death the prophets, ijapo kuwa umewapiga mawe manabii wamekufa, but I want to gather you. Lakini bado nataka niwarejeshe. Like a hen trying to gather the chicks. Niwalete pamoja jinsi vile kuku anavyowaleta pamoja vifaranga wao. Because the hen has much love for the chicks. Kwa sababu kuku ana upendo mkubwa sana kwa wale vifaranga wao. So wa. even with this words of Jesus to Jerusalem, hata kupitia kwa haya maneno ya kutoa Yesu kwenye taifa la Yerusalemu, he has a lot of love for them. Ana upendo mkuu kwa. So I hope when you read the Bible, na tumai kwamba unaposoma Biblia, don't read the Bible just seeing the law. Yaani usisome tu Biblia kwa kuangalia sheria peke yake. But you see how God forgives us and accepts us. Hebu angalia vile Mungu anavyotupokea na kutukubali. Like the prodigal son, kama vile yule mwana mpotevu. When he came back here no money, aliporejea kwa babake alikuwa amepoteza fedha zote and he would be smelly. Na alikuwa hata anatoa uvundo mbaya. But when the father saw him the father ran up to him and like hivi babake alipomuona alimkumbilia na kumkumbatia and hugged him and kissed him akamkumbatia na akamkumbatia and the son still did not believe in his love lakini yule yule kijana hata hakuamini kile ambacho babake alikuwa anakifanya he has prepared how to talk to the father alikuwa amejipanga jinsi ya kuongea na babake he said i'm not worthy to be your son akamwambia babake mimi si staili hata kuitwa mwanao just treat me as your servant hebu ukaniwafanye niwe mmoja wa watumishi wako and instead the father lakini babake akasema gave him the ring the sandal and the rope akampa pete akampa viatu akampa kamba ya kujifunga and also kill the calf na akaua yule yule ndama ambaye alikuwa amenenepa vizuri this is how happy god is when we come to him hivyo ndivyo mungu anavyokuwa na furaha tunapomrudia he's a happy god ni mungu wa furaha many people put the law of the family and the society unto God. Watu wengi wanachukua sheria na kanuni za familia zao na tamaduni zao wanamwekea Mungu. Now the Bible does have the law. The Bible does have the law. Ndiyo Biblia ina sheria, but it's first motivated by the love of God. Lakini ile sheria imechochewa na upendo wa Mungu. God loves me except me. Mungu anapenda kunikubali. So I repent. Now this are the fruit that we should bear. When we believe in Jesus. Unapomwamini Kristo Yesu, haya ndio matunda ambayo utayazalisha. Six fruit you can write down. Kuna matunda sita unaweza kuyaandika. When we are true believer, kama wewe wewe ni muamini wa ukweli. When we have the love of Jesus, kama uko na upendo wa Yesu. We want to follow this. Tunataka tufuate haya. The first is repent and turn away from sin. Tunda la kwanza ni kwamba hebu tubu na ukatoroke dhambi. So repent and turn away from sin. Yaani utubu na uchomoke uwaje dhambi. Number two, continue trusting God. Ya tatu endelea kumwamini Mungu. Repeat every time. Eh. Hey. The second one? Yeah, repeat, you know, so so they have time to write. Aha. Uh -huh. Ya kwanza ilikuwa namna gani? Utubu, uchomoke, uwaje nini? Dhambi. Okay, so every time number two is to trust in God continue trusting God. Ya pili ni kwamba endelea kumwamini Mungu. Endelea kumwamini Mungu. Endelea kumwamini Mungu hiyo ndio ya pili. Number three, ya tatu, to have a close relationship with God. Kuwa na uhusiano wa karibu na Mungu. Kuwa na uhusiano wa karibu na Mungu. Kuwa na uhusiano wa karibu na Mungu. And number four, love God. Ya nne, mpende Mungu. They are saying that we go. Huh? They are saying that we go slow. Right? Yeah, that's why I told you to repeat. Let them write. I'm repeating. Yeah, that's why we go again. Yeah, we go again. We go again. Yeah, 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 we go again. Tubu uwache dhambi ya pili endelea kumwamini Mungu ya tatu 
Uwe na usiano wa karibu na Mungu. Ya tatu, ya nne. Endelea kumpenda Mungu. Number five, obey God. Ya tano ni kwamba mti Mungu. Mti Mungu. Ya nano ya tano ni gani? Mti Mungu. Ukamtii Mungu wako. And number six, serve God. Ya sita, kamtumikie Mungu. Mtumikie Mungu wako. Now, tumikie Mungu wako. What I'm teaching is first we have the love of God. Kile natofundisha ni kwamba ya kwanza uwe na upendo wa Mungu. And we know that any time we repent and trust in God and obey him, ujue kwamba unapoendelea kumtii Mungu na kumtumikia, he's always very happy. Mungu anakuwa na furaha. And then when we serve him, he's for sure he'll reward us. Na unapobasi mtumikia, yeye ako na thawabu atakupa. So I'm motivated by the love of God, the grace of God to obey him. Kwa hiyo uwewe unachotiwa na upenda wa mungu, na nehema ya mungu, ili ukamtii mungu wako. Write this down, it's very important. Pia hebu kaandika haya mambo chini ya muimu. The motivation came from God's love and grace. Kuchochewa kunotokana na upendo na neema ya mungu. Kuchochewa kunotokana na upendo na neema ya mungu. And the law tells us what to do. Lakini sheria inatuambia kile ambacho tuastaili kufanya. Sheria kazi yake ni kutuambia fanya hili na hili. Now the Bible does talk about the law giving us motivation too. Hiyo Biblia inazungumza pia kuhusu upendo lakini katika njia kuchochea. But this is more like warning. Lakini hii ni kama kutoa ilani. Most of the motivation should come from God's grace and love. Ya kwamba kuchochea kwingi lazima kutoka katika upendo na neema ya Mungu. But the Bible does use the law to warn us. Lakini Biblia ndio inatumia sheria kutoa amri kwetu sisi. For instance, it says that not everyone, everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. But only he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. So when people don't obey God, they might not be able to enter the kingdom of God. And the branches says not in the vine. The branches says not in the vine. The true vine, Jesus, chapter 15 of John. Aha, yana kumi atanya zomuza kusu matawi jinsi aliko kuwa katika mzabibu. So if the branch is not in the vine, it will be cut off and cast aside. Basi ni matawi amalo halita zalisha matunda lita kato litu pe mahali kuna moto litomwe. And then for people who don't serve God, then they can be cast out into the outer darkness also. Yani yu inamanisha kwama wale watu ambao hawa mpenda kumti mungu, watatupa mahali kuna giza kubwa wapa kusaga menu. So the Bible does have warning. Pia Biblia ina amri kama hizo. But we don't, those are not our main motivation. Lakini siyo kwama hizo ndio zanazo mchochea zaidi. If I come to you and say, I have to serve God here, if not, God will cast me out in the outer darkness. That would be negative motivation. But I come to you not because I fear. I come to you because I enjoy God. Anakunye kwa sababu yeye anasherekea kuwa na mungu. And I'm all ready to come. Na yeye anachochewa kuja. And I enjoy coming. Na anafraisho sana kuja. Hallelujah. Can you tell the difference? Umeona utofauti hako. So from now on when you talk. Kwa hivu kwanzia sasa unapo ongea. Please. Use the grace of God to motivate people. Tafadhali tumia neema ya mungu kuchochea watu kutumikia mungu. I use an illustration of praying for blessings for the meeting. Nina tumia mfano jitu unavyoweza kuomba kubariki mkutano huu. Now this is very important. Ipia ni ya muhimu. Many people pray for the blessing of the meeting like this. Watu wengi uwe wanaomba baraka za mkutano kama hivi. Oh God bless the meetings. Baba bariki mkuta. Bless all the people. Bariki hao watu. Bless the people who come. Bariki wanao kuja. Bless the people who come on the way. Bariki wale waliogonjia. Oh God, work. Mungu fanya kazi. 
the way they pray, it sounds like God is not working. Jinsi wanavyoomba, waweza kusikia kwamba Mungu hafanyi kazi. They have to wake up God. Yaani wanaomba kwa sauti kubwa ili wakamwamshe Mungu analala. It sounds like God is sleeping. Ikana kwamba Mungu analala. So they try to yell and say, "Sasa wanajaribu kupiga kelele kwa sauti ya Mungu kwa sauti ya Mungu. Amuka ufanye kazi yako. Mungu amuka ufanye kazi yako." Let me tell you from the Bible what this is saying. Hebu nikawaambie kutoka kwenye maandiko ya Bible maandiko ya Yesu. Says before we pray God already knows our needs. Maandiko yanasema wazi kwamba hata kabla hatujaomba Mungu anajua mahitaji yetu. God already wants to work in his on his people. Mungu ako tayari kufanya kazi kwa hao watu wake. God wants to bless his churches. Mungu anataka kubariki makanisa yake. Our prayer is not to wake God up. Maombi yetu sio kwamba inamwamsha Mungu. Our prayer is to remind us of God's love. Maombi yetu ni kutukumbusha unajikumbusha kuhusu upendo wa Mungu. So we can trust in God's love ili kwamba tuamini katika upendo wa Mungu. And motivated by God's love tuchochewe na upendo wa Mungu. And we know that God wants to do something. Na tunajua kwamba Mungu anataka kufanya vitu vikubwa. So the prayer is to help people to trust in God. Maombi ni kusaidia wewe kuamini Mungu. The target of the prayer is that God will work in my heart. Lengo kuu la maombi ni kwamba Mungu akafanye kazi katika moyo wangu. The target is not to wake God up. Lengo kuu sio kumwamsha Mungu. This is how I will pray. Hivi ndivyo nitakavyoomba. God you wants to bless us. You want to bless us. Mungu unataka kutubariki. You want to do great things here. Unataka kutufanyia mambo makubwa. But sometimes we are lazy. Lakini wakati mwingine sisi ni wazee. We are lukewarm. Sisi atukufugufugu and we have not let you work on us we have not let you work on us we have not let you na sisi hatuta hatuja kuachilia wewe kufanya kazi jamani kiswahili si mdomo changu we sorry for our sins tunaomba msamaha kwa dhambi zetu and you are very happy that we are sorry for our sins na utakuwa na furaha kama sisi tuna tuku and you want to pour your love upon us na umelipenda kumwagilia upendo wako kwetu sisi open our heart to accept your love ya kwamba ukakubali sisi mioyo zetu god is loving us now mungu unatupenda sana is with us now mungu uko na sisi sasa hivi god wants to bless us mungu anataka kutubariki we can open our heart tunapofungua mioyo zetu blessings of God. Tunakubali baraka za Mungu. Let us open our heart. Oh, hebu tukafungue mioyo zetu. We need you, God. Tunakuhitaji Mungu. We trust in you, God. Tunakuamini Mungu. Work in our lives. Fanya katika maisha yetu. Can you tell the difference? Umeona vile ameomba na vile alivyoomba ya kwanza? Maombi ya kwanza inamwamsha Mungu aliyepo usingizini. Now some people think Watu wengine ufikiria when they cry out loudly, wanapolia kwa sauti kuu, people will change. Watu watabadilika. Now it's sometimes it works like that. Wakati mwingine ndivyo inafanyika, but it's very important that each one of us is reminded of God's love. Lakini ni muhimu kwamba kila mmoja wetu akumbushwe kuhusu upendo wa Mungu. God wants to do something here. Mungu anataka kufanya kitu hapa. Is we who blocks his work. Ni sisi ambao tunazuia kazi ya Mungu. When we open the heart to him, tunapomfungulia mioyo zetu. First he can bring revival to the people sitting here. Ya kwanza Mungu ataleta uvuvio kwa watu ambao mnakaa hapa sasa hivi. If you hear the message today, unaposikia ujumbe leo, your relationship with God will be different. Uhusiano wako na Mungu hautabaki vivyo hivyo. And you know that whenever you pray, na unajua kwamba wakati wote unapoomba, when you have a pure heart, kama una moyo ambao ni moyo msafi, God is always happy with you. Mungu kila wakati ana furaha na wewe and he will bless you na atakubariki so then when you pray it will be very different basi sasa utakapoanza kuomba itakuwa ni tofauti sema amen amen i have to say this i hope you don't mind nataka kusema haya najua na, natumaini kwamba ha, haitakujalisha sana when i was here i heard the prayer inside of today and yesterday i heard the prayer inside of Jana na leo alisikia maombi yakifanyika hapa kanisani. And I asked Washington, what what were they doing? Are they preaching? Akaniuliza huyo mtu anahubiri ama anaomba. He said no, he, they were praying. Nikamwambia hamna, yani huyo mbaba anaomba kwa kweli amezaa, roho amemshukia. And every sentence was yelling. Na sasa kilicho mshangaza ni kwamba kila jambo alilokuwa akilinena alikuwa ni kama kupiga kede. And I ask him what was he praying about? Akaniuliza anaombea nini? And he said he's praying that what he will come. 
Nikamwambia anaomba anaombea wale bado wako njiani waje kwenye mkutano. To bless the people ili waje wabarikiwe. And thank God. Na pia anao anashukuru ana Mungu. Now when we thank God Tunapomshukuru when we thank someone tunapo unapomshukuru mtu yeyote don't have to talk like this au say au ongee hivyo I thank you <laughs> We don't have to talk like that right yeah maybe au ongee hivyo kushtua hivyo Asante si una mshtua jamani I can say I'm so thankful. Thank you for interpreting for me. Usamwambia asante, asante sana kwa kunitafsiria. So we say to God, thank you. Unamwambia Mungu asante. You love us so much. Wewe unatupenda zaidi. You're so wonderful. Wewe ni maajabu zaidi. And then we can declare the grace of God. Na tunaweza kutangaza upendo wa Mungu. You are blessing us now. Mungu unatubariki sasa. When we open our hearts, tunapofungua mioyo zetu. You bless us. Unatubariki. You have a lot of blessings before us. Una baraka nyingi kwa ajili yetu. So we can trust in you. We can enjoy you. Na so when we pray, we yeah. can pray like this. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is loving us. Mungu unatupenda. Hallelujah. Unaweza tu wakati mwingine kuzungumza kwa sauti tu ndogo ya chini. God knows your feeling. Wow. Mungu anajua hisia zako sasa hivi. God is looking at you as his child. Yaani Mungu anakuona wewe kama mwanaye. He's thinking of you. Anafikiria kukuhusu. So soft words can penetrate people's heart. Yaani hata haya maneno ya upole yanaweza kupengeza katika moyo wa mtu. Now I'm not saying sisemi that you, you, you cannot pray loudly. I'm not saying that. Hakatazi kwamba kuomba kwa sauti ya juu ni makosa. I'm saying pray, you know, at least some of it is gentle. Ya kwamba kuna vipindi vingine omba tu maombi ya upole na kuna wakati mwingine pia omba maombi ya sauti kubwa. And when we preach the gospel, preach to the people, hata tunapowahubiria watu, it doesn't have to be all yelling. Sio lazima ikuwe ni kupiga kelele. I've seen preaching like this. Yeye yeah, ameona kuhubiri kama anointing is good. Upako ni mzuri. Anointing is powerful. Upako uko hapa. Come anointing. Hao oh, kuja unipake. Anoint okay. everyone. Ukampake kila mtu. God has no problem hearing. God is no problem hearing. Mungu hana tatizo ya masikio kusikia. We can say God wants to pour his anointing upon us. Unaweza kusema kwamba Mungu anataka kumwagilia kila mmoja upako wa kipekee. He wants to use you greatly. Anataka kutumia wewe kwa njia hiyo. He wants to give you his anointing. Anataka kukupa upako wake. And he's happy when you're hungry for him. Na ana furaha ukiwa unamtamani sana. We can still talk like this and touch people's heart, right? Tunaweza kuzungumza hivyo na tunaguza mioyo za watu. Is it true? Ni ukweli ama uongo? Now I'm not saying there's no place for loud preaching. I'm not saying. 
I'm not saying there is no place for loud preaching. Hakatazi kwamba kuhubiri kwa sauti ya juu ni makosa. I'm saying that one said. Anasema kwamba uweke kwenye mzani zitoshane as Especially when you talk about the love of God. Asua sana unapozungumza kuhusu upendo wa Mungu. We don't say like this. Atusemi hivi. God loves you. Mungu anakupenda. We don't have to talk like that. Hatufai kusema hivyo. In our message we should have all grace of God. Ya kwamba katika jumbe zetu nyingi tuwe na neema ya Mungu. You know so we are people who feel more of it ili kwamba watu watahisi kwamba wamechochewa. Then we know that God loves us. Wanajua kwamba Mungu anawapenda. And he wants to bless us. Na anataka kutubariki. And anything we do for God, God is very happy. Chochote tunapomfanyia Mungu, Mungu anakuwa na furaha. So with that part we can be very gentle. Sasa sehemu hiyo tuwe tuna upole. Now even when we call people to repentance. Ah tunapowaita watu wakuje katika toba. We don't have to yell at people. Sio lazima tuwapigie watu kelele. For instance, let me illustrate. Kwa mfano nitoe mfano hapa. God cares for you so much. Mungu anakujali zaidi. God thinks about you day and night. Anawaza kuhusu wewe usiku na mchana. And he has a wonderful plan for you. Na ana mpango mwema na wewe. Your life will go higher and higher. Maisha yako yataenda juu na juu zaidi. You can do great things for God. Unaweza kufanya mambo makubwa kwa Mungu. But when we sin, tunapotana dhambi, we'll destroy God's plan. Utaharibu mpango wa Mungu. Now just now he was saying when you're sinning I don't do that I don't do that I don't say when you sin I don't yeah I say kwa mimi mimi nimeonyesha I don't do it I don't point at me fanya makosa kabisa niweka mkono nyuma then I don't say when you sin I say when we sin I love pia haseni kwamba wakati unapofanya dhambi anasema wakati tunapotenda dhambi when we sin tunapotenda dhambi I put my hand here naweka mkono wako kwenye kifua hapa when i sin ninapotenda dhambi we sin tunapotenda dhambi we offend god sisi tunamchukiza mungu and we destroy god's plan na tunaharibu mpango wa mungu god's plan is the best for every one of us mpango wa mungu ndio mzuri kwa kila mmoja wetu when it's a good thing i will point the people kama ni kitu kizuri mtawaonyesha watu hivi. God is a wonderful plan in your life. Mama, God Mungu ana mpango mzuri na wewe maishani mwako. And if when we sin, we will destroy God's plan. Na tunapotenda dhambi, tunaharibu ule mpango wa Mungu. Do you want to destroy God's plan? Ungelipenda kuharibu mpango wa Mungu? Amen. So that's why we should all repent and follow God. Hivyo ndivyo maana yake inafaa tutubu na tumfuate Mungu. So I'm saying when even when we Try to motivate people to repent we don't have to yell. Nasema tunapojaribu kuwachochea watu ili watubu tusiwapigie kelele. Now but don't feel pressure because I said this. Kwa hivyo wewe usimuonee kiwaru. Unajua kwa nini mtu kiwaru? It takes time to adjust to this. Yaani usi usimkasirikie kwa haya mambo ambayo amesema. So that we immerse ourselves in God's love. Ili kwamba sisi sote tukaishi katika upendo wa Mungu. Okay, now how can we experience God's love more? Tunaweza basi kuhisi namna gani upendo wa Mungu kwa zaidi. Now there are three kinds of prayer that helps us to live in his love. Kuna aina tatu za maombi ambazo zinaweza kusaidia tukaishi upendo wa Mungu zaidi. Okay, the first kind of prayer is the prayer of grace. Ombi la kwanza ni ombi la neema. Ombi la neema. Kama unaandika chini andika ombi la neema. So you write this down. Basi kaandike chini. So it will be like God is loving me now. Maombi ya neema ni kana hivi inaomba hivi Mungu unanipenda sasa hivi. God is remembering me now. Mungu unanikumbuka sasa hivi. God wants to bless me now. Mungu anataka kunibariki sasa hivi. God wants to help me now. Mungu anataka kunisaidia sasa hivi. God has a wonderful plan for me now. Mungu ana mpango mzuri na kwa maisha yangu sasa hivi. It's all from God to us. Yaani maombi ya neema ni vitu ambavyo vinavyotoka kwa Mungu zikija kwa sisi. It's all the blessings of God. Yaani ni baraka zote za Mungu zinateremka kwa juu zikija chini. Now many people wake up and they feel unhappy. Wakati mwingine unaweza kuamka asubuhi unasikia kwamba hauna furaha. Immediately we can declare Unapoamuka tangaza hivi. God is blessing me now. Mungu anibariki sasa hivi. God loves me now. Unanipenda sasa hivi. He wants me to be happy. Unahitaji niwe na furaha. He has a wonderful plan in my life. Mungu una mpango mzuri ndani ya maisha. I can be happy today. Naweza kuwa na furaha leo. And the second kind of prayer, na sehemu ingine ya pili ya maombi, prayer of worship. 
ni maombi ya kuabudu that i love you lord ninakupenda bwana I worship you, Lord. I depend on you, Lord. I'm happy with you, Lord. I hold on to you. I like you. Now when I pray, I use ordinary language. Lord, I like you. It's like two persons in love. Ni kama ule mfano wa watu wawili wakiwa katika upendo. Lord I like you. Bwana nakupenda. I need you. Nakuhitaji. I want you. Ha ha ha. Now whenever I say that the joy will flow out. <laughs> it's not me laughing, it's the joy of the flowing out. Kila wakati unajua ni shuka na kutea. Kila wakati anapoongea hivyo, anasikia ni furaha ya Mungu inamtaza mpaka Okay, the third kind of prayer is interactive prayer. Maombi ya mwisho ya tatu ni maombi ya mahusiano. It's based on faith. Maombi ya mahusiano, chimbuko lake ni imani. Whenever we pray, we know that God is listening. So I will say, yes, when I pray to you, you are listening. Unaomba ukisema kwamba najua Mungu ninapo kuomba unanisikiliza. It's combining the first kind of prayer and the second kind. You combine it together. Una unaweka pamoja ile ombi la kwanza na ombi la pili. So when I love you, you're very happy. Ya kwamba ninapo kuomba wewe unakuwa na furaha. And when I pray to you, you help me. Ninapo kuomba utanisaidia. When I come close to you, you bless me. Ninapo soma karibu na wewe utanibariki. You hear my prayer, utasikia maombi yangu. You want to bless me, utanibariki. Now this will give us confidence. He itakupa um ita itakuimiza. The opposite is like this. Eh kinyume chake ni hivi. Some people will pray like this. Watu wengine wataomba hivi. Oh God, we need you. Mungu nakuitaje? Come quickly. Joha unjo pesi. Where are you? Uko wapi Mungu? I need your help now. Nahitaji msaada wako hivi sasa. Have you forgotten me? Yaani Mungu mbona umenisahau? Now some people pray with this spirit. Watu wengine wanaomba na roho kama hii. As if God is deaf. Kana kwamba Mungu is deaf. Kana kwamba Mungu ha yeye ni ki Mtu asiyesikia anaitwa nani? As if God ah Mungu ni kiziwi. As if God doesn't care. Ni kana kwamba Mungu hatujali sisi. And I always know that God cares. Lakini mimi najua kwamba Mungu anatujali kila wakati. So whenever I pray, I will pray like this. Ninapoomba nitaomba hivi. God you want to do one wonderful things. Mungu unataka kufanya mambo ya ajabu. I know when I come to you, najua ninapokuja kwako. You give me strength. Utanipa nguvu. You bless me. Utanibariki. Bless the people. Tabariki watu. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I can relax in you. Sasa napumzika na mimi. I can rejoice in you. Nafurahia ndani mwangu. Hallelujah. 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 Now I encourage you in your worship. Wewe ninakuimiza katika kuabudu kwako. Don't just sing from one song to another. Usiimbe dakika moja na imbo wimbo huu. Ya pili umebadilisha wimbo mwingine, ukibadilisha badilisha majimbo. Or when you dance, don't just dance from one dance to another dance. Ama unapocheza, usicheze stai eh you can pray like this. Lord, we are happy to come to worship you. We want to worship you with our voice. We want to worship you with our dance. So when you are dancing, you can say something like this. Worthy is the Lord. Great is the Lord. It's just singing a song and another song and another song and dance one dance and another dance. Yani wanaiba wimbo huu na patisha mna kwa wingi na wanacheza wa kipatisha mtindo. There should be more declaring the grace of God. Milazima katika mabohari yote kuwe kutangaza neema ya mungu. God is listening to us now. Mungu na nisikiliza sasa. God is happy that we worship Him. Mungu ana furaha na bomo abudu. And God is coming now. Mungu ana kujia sasa. We know for sure God is coming. Tunajua kwa limu ana kujia. So that way it will and.
encourage people God is here listening to us. So use this kind of prayer all day long. Now let me test you a little bit. Okay. I give you a prayer and then you tell me what it is. God will love you. What is this? What kind of prayer? Sasa wapo aina tatu za maombi. Amen. Sasa anaposema kwamba Mungu God I love you. Mungu nakupenda. Yaani sasa inatoka kwako inaenda kwa Mungu. Hiyo ni maombi gani? Amen. Amen. Now I'm going to conclude now. Nataka kumalizisha sasa. All day long ya kwamba siku yote nzima if we have a pure heart to go, to glorify God and bless people kama tuko na moyo safi wa kumtukuza na kumpendeza Mungu we can say this to encourage ourselves all the time tunaweza kuzungumza haya kujihimiza sisi kila wakati when i worship God God is very happy ninapomwabudu Mungu Mungu anakuwa na furaha so when i worship God napomwabudu Mungu i can rejoice naweza kufurahia i can enjoy worshiping God na kurudika kumwabudu so I hope the worship leader and the dance leader will say something like this. The worship God, God is very happy. And all day long, whatever we do for God, when we help someone, when we encourage someone, then we say God is happy with me. So you can enjoy serving God. Thank you Lord Jesus. You are happy with everything I do for you. So I can enjoy you. I can enjoy praying. I can enjoy loving you. I can enjoy blessing people. Now try this kind of prayer tonight. See if you will experience more joy and peace. Okay. Is there any question about this teaching? It's a, I know it's a big teaching. It's very important. Kuna swali lolote kwenye mafundisho haya ambayo yameyafundisha? Kuna swali? Hallelujah. Now, uh, pastor. Okay. He has already said. Okay, okay. So we'll conclude with a prayer. Stand up. I have to see my mentor one bit. And see how I use these three kinds of prayer. Na sasa ukaone vile and unavyoweza kutumia hizi aina tatu za maombi. Okay, send up everyone. Haya jamani, kila mmoja tusimame. I think of God loving us now. Unaposimama hivyo, hebu anza kufikiria kwamba Mungu anakupenda sasa hivi. God is remembering us now. Mungu anatukumbuka sasa hivi. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you Jesus. Asante Yesu. You're with us right now. Uko na sisi sasa hivi. You're so very happy when we come to you. Yaani una furaha tunapokuja mbele zako. When we love you, you're very happy. Tunapokupenda unakuwa na furaha. When we believe that you love us, you're very happy. Tunapoamini kwamba upendo wako ni wa kweli unakuwa na furaha. Naomba kila mmoja ukafumbe macho yako. I believe that God is loving us right now. Naamini kwamba Mungu anakupenda kuanzia sasa. Now, if two persons hunger for the Holy Spirit, well, while I'm praying I can lay hand on you. Two persons who hunger for the Holy Spirit come forward. Anasema kama kuna watu wawili ambao wanasema kama wako na njaa ya Kristo Yesu wawili waje mbele aweke mikono. Come forward while I'm praying I can lay hand on you. To experience the Holy Spirit more. Ya kwamba unaweza ukaisi kuuza roho mtakatifu zaidi. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Asante, Jesus. 
Help us to enjoy your love. Tusaidie tukasherekee upendo wako. Help us to relax in you. Tusherekee tukapumzike na limwa. We need you Lord Jesus. Tunakuhitaji Bwana Yesu. And you love us all the time. Unatupenda kila wakati. So we don't have to worry. Kwa hivyo sisi hatuna shida zozote. We don't have to be burdened. Sisi hatujabebeshwa mizigo sasa. We don't have to be under the law. Sisi tena hatuko chini ya sheria. We live under the grace of God. Tunaishi chini ya neema ya Mungu. We can enjoy God's grace. Tunasherekea neema ya Mungu. Thank you Jesus. Asante Yesu. Come and bless us. Uje utubariki Bwana. Take away our burdens. Ukatuondolee mizigo. Comfort our heart. Njoo katika mioyo yetu. Be with us Lord. Uwe na sisi Bwana. Thank you Jesus. Asante Yesu. In Jesus name we pray. Kwa Yesu Kristo tunaomba. Amen. Amen. Now, do you feel more peace and joy? You say more peace and joy or love? Je, unahisi unahisi katika maombi unahisi kwamba umefarijika unahisi amani na upendo wa Mungu? You can raise your hand if you feel more peace and joy. Kama umesikia hivyo unaweza inua tu mkono wako. After the message and after the prayer, labda katika maombi na katika ujumbe unahisi upendo wa Mungu. This time I'd like to share what you experience inside you. What you experience in your heart. Nataka sasa uweze kutuambia ndani ya moyo wako umehisi nini? Umejisikia aje. Ndani ya moyo wangu nimejisi flat. The joy, I felt the joy of the Lord. Hallelujah. Let the joy come out. Hallelujah. What, what a mercy of wrath say katoke inje. Okay, God bless you all. Mungu awabariki wote. So tonight try this kind of prayer. Kwa hivyo usiku wa leo jaribu maombi hayo. I can enjoy God. Unaweza ukasherekea Mungu. And I love God. Na niumpende Mungu. God is very happy. Mungu anafuraha. God is accepting my prayer. Mungu anakubali maombi. God is blessing me now. Mungu anibariki sana. Hallelujah.